Namco does the greater good and releases their biggest title ever, Pac-Man. Of course, I don't need to tell you about Pac-Man, because everyone knows what Pac-Man is. A yellow ball man is trapped in a maze and must eat all the dots to get out. Meanwhile, these ghosts are harassing you and want you dead. Thankfully, with your power pellet power-up, you can gain the power to eat ghosts who turn blue in fear. One of the most notable things is the ghosts that are not four of the same. They each have their own AI, which is done to keep the game interesting. Blinky, the red one, hates Pac-Man the most and chases him inside as well as being the fastest. Pinky, the pink one, likes to position itself in front of Pac-Man's face. Inky, the blue one, who seems to share either Blinky or Pinky's ability depending on the situation. And finally, Clyde. He has no AI. He just wanders as he feels like. So Pac-Man was a gigantic smash and still holds the record of the arcade game to make the most quarters. And I think the success just comes down to the simplicity of it. Devil World reviewed a few episodes ago, while a good game required a bit of work to complete the goal. In Pac-Man, all you have to do is eat all the dots and then it's on to the next round. It gets faster, the ghosts get smarter, and the power pellet doesn't last as long on them. Originally, the game was called Puckman. However, Midway, the American distributor of the arcade game, thought that the evil vandal teenagers would change the name to Fuckman, and it would, I guess, devalue the game. So they changed it to Pac-Man, and Namco thought the name was much better and kept it for pretty much the rest of time. Puck was obviously in reference to the hockey puck shape, but the pack comes from the Japanese onomatopoeia for the sound of a mouth opening and closing. Pac-Man was the brainchild of one Toru Iwatani, who despite making one of the most popular video games of all time, never went on to be a Shigeru Miyamoto type. The only other huge hit he released was Pole Position. But anyways, Mr. Iwatani got the idea of Pac-Man from noticing that a lot of arcade games really only appeal to male audiences like Galaxian and Space Invaders. So he created a game that would pretty much appeal to everyone. Pac-Man, the true feminist icon in gaming. And after Pac-Man, arcade games pretty much branched off from the space shooter genre to something completely different, based on some weird concepts like a man trying to rescue his girlfriend from an ape, a frog trying to avoid being flattened, or whatever the hell Qbert is. Pac-Man on the NES isn't as good as the arcade version, but for a good long while, it'll pretty much be the best platform to play Pac-Man on until consoles would actually emulate the arcade games, especially considering the most popular port of Pac-Man at the time was the Atari 2600 version. We all know how polished that version was. Pac-Man was released in the States, not by Namco, however, as they had no U.S. department for releasing games, and relied on other publishers to release them. So Tengen released the home port in 1988, and would end up releasing several other Namco NES games. But Tengen eventually lost the rights to make licensed games approved by Nintendo, so Pac-Man turned into an unlicensed game up until 1993, where Namco finally opened a U.S. department and republished it alongside a port of Mrs. Pac-Man. And while Pac-Man had many, many sequels and spin-offs and was a gigantic fad at the time, Namco only released one other Pac-Man-related game in Pac-Man's heyday, but it will be at least an interesting one.